This is session 7, a uh, procedure for conducting operational research. Uh, by the end of this session, students are expected to be able to define operational research, co collect relevant, re relevant data for operational research, and analyze relevant data using operational research techniques, and conclude and recommend for operational research. Uh, operational research, uh, research encompassing a wide range of problem solving techniques and method applied in the pursuit of proved decision making and efficiency. The key element of operational research are that the research questions are generated by identifying constraints and challenges of implementing program activities, primary prevention, care, and treatment. Uh, the research questions are generated by identifying constraints and challenges of implementing program activities, primary prevention, care, and treatment. Uh, the answers provided to these questions should have direct practical relevance to solving problems and improving healthcare delivery. The answers provided to these questions should have direct practical relevance to solving problems and improving healthcare delivery. What does it mean? Uh, to Leona, kwamba mtu anapoona tatizo, anakuwa anajiuliza maswali ambayo majibu ya maswali ambayo anajiuliza yana yanakuja yana, yana, yana kutatua changamoto mfano umekaa umeona kuna tatizo la ugonjwa fulani sehemu fulani unaanza kujiuliza kwa nini inatokea tu eneo hili eh kwa nini ni watu hawa Umeona eh labda ugonjwa wa kwara. Ukaja ukakuta kuumbe majibu sasa mazingira yao wanayoishi sio mazingira safi sana. Ni mazingira hatarishi. Kwa hiyo majibu yako yatakuja okay tufanye to reset an environment ambayo hao watu wanaishi. Na baada hapo unakuta tatizo limefanyaje? Limeondoka. So the answers provided to these questions should have direct practical relevance to solving problems and improving healthcare delivery. Collection of relevant data for operational research. For you to get answers of your questions, you need information. And for you uh, to get that information, you must collect the data. And the processed data it gives you information. There is no information without data. So when you do this collection of relevant data for a, pro a certain problem, it's where you get answers. Then how do we collect this data? Data collection techniques refer to a variety of methods which are used to gather information for this study. Uh, data collection techniques allow to systematically collect information about the objects of study, people, objects, phenomena, and about the settings in which they occur. In the collecting of data, we have to be systematic. If data collected haphazardly, then it will be difficult to answer research questions in conclusive way. Tunazungumzia the general technique. Uh, of collecting this information. Where do we get them from? Are we getting? Getting the information, something should be done. Which means you should collect information. And there are several techniques of collecting the information. Uh, and this is common in, 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 in almost everything that we do in our daily life. You know, we do something because we are informed or we have information of something. Example of offers a data collection during a, nutrition, uh, during a nutrition survey, three different weighing scale we are used in three villages. The researcher did not record which scale we are used in which village. After completion of the survey, it was discovered that 
the scale were not standardized and it indicated different weights when weighing the same child. It was therefore impossible to conclude in which village malnutrition was most prevalent. Why? Uh, the weighing scale were not balanced. Are we getting? There are three villages, but you did not. Maybe the weighing scale number one was in village one, weighing scale number two was in village two, and weighing scale number three were in village three. <laughs> that were not noted. So it was therefore impossible to, to conclude in which village malnutrition was most prevalent. So let's see these common data collection techniques which are in use today. Uh, we have reviewing documents, observing observation, interviewing or face-to-face here, we have administering written questionnaires and we have focus group discussion. Reviewing document. Document to be reviewed can be obtained from dispensary, health center, and hospital records. For example, analysis of the information routinely collect, collected by health facilities can be very useful for identifying problems, such as flows of drug supply or increase in the incidence of certain diseases. Other sources of data may be health information, management system, sensors, etc., etc. And published reports and publications uh, in archive and libraries or in offices, newspaper, and published case histories. All these uh, may be reviewed for certain information to be collected. Uh, but these are methods, but every method has its limitations. Okay, let's see the limitation of reviewing document. Data are not always easily accessible. Ethical issues concerning confidentiality may arise. We know accessing data may be for, for prevalent of a disease. Maybe you are going to, 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 to assess something uh, which in one way or another uh, uh, the, the person, the immediate person uh, in which that information is concerned did not give permission or whatsoever or giving out information uh, in which our code and conduct does not allow us to give them out, you know. So ethical issues concerning confidentiality may arise, you know. Information may be inaccurate or incomplete. Information may be inaccurate or incomplete. Uh, let's see the observation technique. Observation is, is a technique that involves systematically selecting, watching and recording behavior and characteristic of living being. Object of phenomena. Observation is a technique that involves systematically selecting, watching and recording behavior and characteristics of living beings. Objects of phenomena. Observation of human behavior is a much used data collection technique. It can be undertaken in different ways. For example, we have participant observation. The observer takes part in the situation he or she observes. For example, a doctor hospitalized in a uh, with a broken hip who now observes hospital procedures from within. Non-participant observation. This second type of form of, uh, of this observation technique. The observer watches the situation openly or concealed but does not participate. Observation becomes a scientific tool and a method of data collection for the researcher when it serves a family research purposes, it's systematically planned and recorded, is subject to check and control on validity and reliability. Less is the advantage of observation method. Subjective bias is limited if observation 
is accurate done. Uh, sorry, subjective bias is eliminated if observation is accurate done. The information relates to what is currently happening, not complicated by either past behavior or future intention or attitudes, independent of respondents, willingness to respond, and answer less demanding on active cooperation on the part of the respondents. Suitable in studies which deal with subjects who are not capable of leaving verbal reports of their feelings for one reason or another. As we said, all these techniques, every technique has limitation. There is no one uh, technique which is perfect. Are you getting? And also we choose the type of data collection depending on the type of study we're doing. Uh, limitation observation methods. It's an expensive method. Information provided by this method is very limited. Sometimes unforeseen events may interfere with the observational task. Some subjects are rarely accessible to direct observation. If subjects know that they are being observed, they may change their behavior. Uh, another technique is interviewing technique. An interview is a data collection technique that involves oral questioning of respondents, either individually or as a group. Um, it requires a person known as the interviewer asking questions in the face-to-face -face contact uh, to the interviewee or through other means of communication like telephone. You know, it's uh, asking questions face-to-face. -face. You ask questions and questions are answered. Are we, uh, are we getting it clear? You know, uh, it's some kind of interaction. You ask questions and the questions in which uh, someone has to give out answers. So, I know all of us who have the concept of an interview, what an interview is. It can also be done on telephone. Are we getting it? Or face to face, as we said up here. So let's see the limitation of reviewing a document. Uh, sorry. Uh, limitation of reviewing document we have seen there. Sorry, but this part, but uh, but discuss. Let's see its advantages of the uninterview method. Let's see advantages of the interview method. Detailed information can be obtained. Interviewer could overcome resistance of the respondent, if any. Provide flexibility to the interviewer to restructure, clarify, or add probe questions. Observation can also be applied during interview. Is suitable for use with both literates and illiterates. Has higher response rate than written questionnaires. Their interviewer can collect supplementary information about, respond uh, about respondents personal characteristics and environment. Limitation of interview. It is very expensive and time consuming, especially when the sample is large. Chances of interview, as well as interviewee, bias are high. People with certainly high level position, like official or executive, may not be easily uh, approachable under this method. And to that extent, the data may provide inadequate. Creating effective report with interview may be difficult. Some subject may demand incentives during data collection process. Some subject may demand incentives during data collection or data process. There may be language barrier between an interviewer and an interviewee. Let's see prerequisites and basic tenets, tenets of interview. Prerequisites and basic tenets of interview. Interviewers should be careful, selected, and trained. They must possess technical competence, interviewing, and interpersonal skills. They should be able to create an atmosphere of trust and confidence. Written questionnaires. A written questionnaire, also referred to as self-administered questionnaire, 
is a data collection method in which written questions are presented that are to be answered by the respondent in written form. The question can, can be either open-ended or closed with pre-categorized answers. A written questionnaire can be administered in different ways, such as by a written questionnaire can be administered in different ways, such as by sending questionnaires by mail with clear instruction on how to answer the questions and asking for mail response. Gathering all of or part of the respondents in one place at one time, giving oral or written instructions, and letting the respondents fill out the questionnaire, or and delivering questionnaires to respondents and collect them later, or hand delivering questionnaires to respondents and collecting them later. Hey, koile, una gawa questionnaire ambazo na maswali yale una expect your respondent to answer wakishajibu wakimaliza you collect them or gathering all part of the respondent in one place at one time giving oral or written instruction uh, and letting the respondent fill out the questionnaires au uh, kwa kusanya watu pamoja ukawapa questionnaire wakawa na una ukawapa maelekezo wakanajibu maswali yaliyoulizwa kwa wakati huo advantage of questionnaires uh, they are locals when studies larger Free from interview bias, respondents have adequate time to give out the answers. Respondents who are not easily approachable can be reached using large studies, permit anonymity, and may result in more honest response. Limitations of questionnaire. Low rate of return of the dual field in questionnaires, bias due to non-response is undermined used only when respondents are educated and cooperative. Control of a questionnaire may be lost. Not flexible once the questionnaire has been dispatched out. Ambiguous replies or omissions, creating difficulty in interpretation. Slowest method of all when mailing is used. Let's see focus group discussion. Focus group Discussion allows a group of six to twelve informants uh, to freely discuss a certain subject with the guidance of facilitator or reporter, during which group members talk freely and spontaneously about a certain topic. Characteristic uses of focus group discussion. A focus group discussion is a qualitative method. A focus group discussion aims to be more than a question and answer interaction. The idea is that group members discuss the topic among themselves with guidance from the facilitator. Uh, focus group discussion technique can be used to focus research and develop relevant research thesis by exploring in greater depth the problem to be investigated and its possible causes, formulate appropriate questions for more structured large scale surveys, etc., etc., help understanding and solve unexpected problem in, in intervention, develop appropriate message for health education programs, and later evaluate the message for clarity, explore controversial topics, explore controversial topics. For example, sexual behavior is a controversial topic in the sense that males and females judge sexual relations, relations and sexuality often from very different perspectives. <coughs> Advantage of focus group discussion. The researcher can interact with the participant, pose follow-up questions or ask questions that probe more deeply. Result can be easier to understand than complicated statistical data. The researcher can get information from non-verbal responses, such as facial expression, or about language. Information is provided more quickly than if people were interviewed separately. Let's see limitation of focused group discussion. The small sample size means the group might not be good representation of the larger population. What does it mean here? For example, uh, we talk uh, about a population of 10,000 
or 100,000 people, you know, and you form the focus group discussion of 12, 12 people, maybe 240 people out of 100,000 people. Do you get it? Uh, so we say these 240 or 140 in 12 group, for example, of 12, 12 or 15, 15 or so ever, uh, is sometimes it's not fair or it's not reliable for this sample of 144 to present 100,000 and say, uh, you know, and give you right to speak of the population. I think we got a point here. Because the point is quite um, straight. Uh, and I hope everyone is understanding what we actually <coughs> want to imply. So group discussion can be difficult to steer and control. So time can be lost to irrelevant topics. Respondents can feel peer pressure to give similar answers to the moderator's questions. The moderator's keys in phrasing questions, along with setting, can affect responses and the skew result. Uh, I think when you look at these limitations, they are all common. Although not always a common sense is common. Uh, but we come to the point when you see how can focus group discussion on the source message uh, or a good way of collecting data, but uh, it look like a very small sample size uh, means the group might not be good representation of the larger population. But we are all there. Uh, let's look at this figure, data collection techniques and tools. For example, you are using available information, data collection tools, we have checklists, data compilation forms, con observation, we have eye and other sensors, pen, paper, because uh, you see, then you write down what you, you observed, watch, you may have to, to write time you, you observed, uh, <coughs> scars, microscope, scope, etc., etc., it depends on the type of study that you do, interviewing, Interview guide, checklist, questionnaire, tab recorder, and etc. etc. Are the mystery written questionnaire? Actually, the tool is questionnaire. Uh, you may go deep and refer this send out 7.1, 7 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4. It's down there. Uh, <coughs> take your time. Pass through. There is something, uh, some things in which we are discussing here, but they are more elaborated uh, to these handouts. So she go and match up with this handout. Let's see analysis of data using operational research techniques. Data analysis, it is the computation of certain measures along with searching for pattern of relationship that exists among data group. It is the process of testing the research thesis. Analysis tools must be capable of providing some basis for determining whether the thesis are true or false. Data processing and analysis should start in the field with checking for completeness of the data and performing quality control checks while sorting the data by instrument used and by group of informants. Data of small sample have to be processed and analyzed as soon as they are collected. The main objective is to interpret, analyze, and communicate easily the information obtained from field research. To transform the raw data into a form that is easy to understand and interpret followed by that presentation in a more coherent way. The so-called uh, data analysis. A plan for processing and analyzing data help the researcher assure that analysis is feasible, all the information she or he needs has indeed been collected and in standardized way. Uh, she or he has not collected unnecessary data which will never be analyzed. Handling of information becomes systematic and easy. Tools for analysis and interpreting the result are arranged before 
hand. For quantitative data, the starting point in analysis is usually, uh, is usually a description of the data for each available for all the study units included in the sample. Processing of data may take place during data collection or when all data has been collected. Description and analysis are carried out after the field work has been completed. For qualitative data, it is more a matter of describing, summarizing, and interpreting the data obtained for each study unit or for each group of study unit. Researchers start analyzing while collecting the data so that question that remains unanswered or new question which come up can be addressed before that collection is over. Let's see the conclusion and recommendation for operational research. The conclusion and recommendation should follow logically from the discussion of the finding. Conclusion can be short and they have already been elaborated discussed in discussion. And the discussion will follow the sequence in which the findings have been presented, which in turn depends on the objectives. The conclusion should logically follow the same order. The recommendation may be summarized according to the group toward which they are directed. For example, policy makers, health and health related managers at district or lower level, health and health related staff who could implement the activities, potential clients, uh, community at large. Remember that action oriented group are most interested in this section. In making recommendation, use not only the finding of the study but also supportive information from other sources. The recommendation should take into consideration the local characteristics of the health system, constraints, feasibility, and the usefulness of the proposed solution. They should be discussed with the all concerned before they are finalized. If the recommendations are short, roughly one page, include them all in the summary and omit them as a separate section in order to avoid a repetition. Uh, that is the end of our session, uh, lesson seven. And let's see the key point in which you should understand how you should get the larger concept of from this lesson. Uh, operational research, refer to research encompassing a wide range of problem solving techniques and method applied in pursuit of improved decision making and efficiency. Various data collection techniques can be used, such as using available information, observing, interviewing face to face, in depth interviews, <coughs> administering written questionnaire, focus group discussion, and combining different data collection techniques. Evaluation. What is operational research? What is operational research? What are the procedures for data collection? What data are analyzed using operational research techniques? Uh, if you understand the lesson, I hope you'll be able to answer these questions down. Because the questions focusing on the big picture that you have seen from procedures and our operational research. Uh, see you in the next lesson. Uh, let's concentrate and understand the topic and the technique. Because as we go ahead, we can see how are we going to use them? Where, what are they for? Ask yourself. But without these techniques, no research can be done because you will face difficulties in data collection. Thank you. God bless you.